What did you see in Robert Griffin III yesterday uh, as he returned to action when Colt got hurt? Well, I, I watched the tape today, but uh, just of RG3. I watched every, every throw he made, and the numbers were pretty good, 18 for 27, 236, no interceptions. But he took an atrocious seven sacks, and, and I'm a big believer that pass protection starts with the quarterback. And, and on at least three of those sacks, you could put it on him easily, if not more. Um, and, and I think the big picture is that he's got arm strength, he's got athletic ability, he's a smart guy, but his pocket awareness is poor. And until he learns how to throw from within, within the pocket, I don't think he's a starting NFL quarterback. Uh, Mike, is that learnable? Or at this point, you know, I played at Baylor with presumably no playbook. And he's, now this is the third year in the league, albeit injuries have taken their toll, A, in terms of time away from the field, and B, physically. Is, can he learn to be a pocket passer, or is that either in you or it's not? I think it's the hardest thing to evaluate when college kids are coming out because years ago, at least – the colleges were running similar offenses to the pros. And now you've got to kind of watch a kid and, and try to decide whether you believe he'll learn pocket awareness because you're getting minimal snaps to look at. It's one of those things where when you look at all the athletic quarterbacks that have been drafted, let's go from Tim Tebow all the way up to Johnny Manziel, the ones that have made it and are still active and starting and playing at good level – are the ones like Russell Wilson that have learned to play within the pocket first and use their legs to extend plays. Uh, Mike, the Redskins have three quarterbacks, and some days you get the sense that they have three possible starting quarterbacks in this league. Then there are days you get the sense that you have, they have three quarterbacks, none of whom may be in the league very long. Of the three, uh, which one would you sort of tie your boat to if you had to? Which of these three guys might lead the Redskins uh, to an ascension instead of what we see week in and week out? Boy, it's a good question. Um, and I, I know a lot of people wanted to believe in Kirk Cousins, and, and I wanted to believe in him. He, he works hard, he cares, he studies, he works at it. But a lot, what you find out in this league, Alex, is that there aren't 32 franchise quarterbacks, there aren't even 32 good starting quarterbacks. So you're fortunate if you get one of those 10 or 12 guys that are good enough to help you win a Super Bowl. And at this point, from what I've seen of your three quarterbacks, I'm not sure I would bang the table. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't bang the table for any of the three to become a franchise quarterback. Mike, you know the talent, but you also know the business that this is. And, and I'm sure you're well aware of sort of the M.O. Uh, of Dan Snyder. Do you think Jay Gruden should be back next year? And do you think he will be back next year as Redskins head coach? I think he definitely should be back next year. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe in one and done ever for a head coach. Um, I think he's in the middle of a mess right now. And I think you've got to give him time. And, and you've got to give him. Uh, and he and Bruce Allen have to get to be tied at the hip. And they've got to have a couple more years to get this thing turned around. And trust me, it starts at the quarterback position. And... I've known Jay for a lot of years, and sometimes he's one of the most inherently honest people I've met in this industry, and sometimes he's probably too honest. Uh, Mike Mayock, thank you so much for your insight. We uh, look forward to following you and your coverage on NFL Network. Mike, all the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Alex. See you, man. Thank you, Mike.